Okay, so we're going to do this one a little bit differently today. Right now I want you to be on page 14 of the reference tables. You're at the top of the screen. This is called Selective Properties of Earth's Atmosphere. So we're going to talk about the different layers of the atmosphere. Just keep in mind, you may also need to use page one of your reference tables for a few of the practice questions today. All right, so let's take a look at how we're going to read this document and then I will direct you to a place where you can do some practice in your packet or where you are with us digitally. So we've got altitude. This is our altitude here above sea level. Sea level again is zero feet, zero meters. Also you could say with this scale it's zero miles, zero kilometers. Sea level is zero. Everything from that above is how we interpret altitude or elevation. So we have different scales, different distance scales for altitude. On the left side we have kilometers. Looks like we have a gap that has been labeled for us from zero to 40 kilometers. And we have one, two, three, four smaller interval boxes here. And so each one of these, if you do the math, 40 divided by four, you should have how many kilometers you're counting up by. Over here on the right side of this altitude graduated scale, we have zero miles, 25 miles, one, two, three, four, five. You should be able to do the math and figure out the interval. All right, next, as we're moving across, we are given three different graphs and at each of those graphs, we have a unique pattern of boundary lines found at different elevations, different altitudes. So let's take the first one, temperature. So everything here deals with temperature. So altitude is going to be the y-axis. Temperature is our x-axis for this graph line. Now let's go through some of the names of these layers as well as some of the boundaries or interfaces between them. Tropopo troposphere is the actual atmosphere. The boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere is called the tropopause. We have the stratopause between the stratosphere and mesosphere. We have the mesopause between the mesosphere and the thermosphere. Okay. Now if we are trying to figure out at what altitude these layers are changing, we are going to use these dashed lines to see where they intersect with the altitude scale. When reading off the temperatures, we're dealing with Celsius. We have several interval marks here. We have zero, an unlabeled, and a 100 Celsius. So we have zero, 50, 100. There are also a few that are uniquely identified here with temperature because they exist exactly at the pauses and have been noted for you. When reading this particular graph, let's zoom in, make it a little easier to see. So when we are measuring the temperature throughout the column of the atmosphere, we will travel up this graph line. So depending on what altitude we are, so for example, if we are five miles above sea level, we would see where that would intersect with the temperature and determine roughly what that value is. It's a large scale. So if we have zero and this is 50 degrees Celsius, halfway is 25 degrees Celsius. This would probably be closer to 30 degrees Celsius. Or I should say negative. These are all negatives on this side. So negative 30 degrees Celsius. All right, now as we continue, we see that we have an exchange where we are crossing the tropal pause. That gives us an absolute value of negative 55 degrees Celsius on average. And then the temperature starts to increase in the stratosphere. What most of us are not aware or maybe you are, but didn't know that it was in the stratosphere, is that we have a significant amount of ozone in this area here. So there are indeed chemical molecules that can be excited by solar radiation 
causing there to be a temperature increase. I mean, it's not exactly balmy, it's not like the equator or anything, but it does raise us from negative 55 degrees Celsius up to zero degrees Celsius. So we go from way below freezing to freezing, okay? I'd like to point out that ozone also helps protect us from UV radiation. We may talk more about that during climbing. Now, as we climb in altitude, we hit the stratopause. The stratopause, as I had mentioned, is at zero degrees Celsius, but the temperature depletes in the mesosphere because we do not have any more of those molecules of albatross that can become excited due to solar radiation. And we decrease as far down as minus 90 degrees Celsius, really cold. And then everybody wants to know, why do we just expand and expand and expand in the thermosphere? Because Mr. Ryan, isn't all the air gone? And you know what? The answer to that is yes, it is gone. Practically, virtually gone. So why do we heat up? Well, it's not necessarily that there's air up here to be heated, but if you put a sensor or a probe or a spaceship or a human that's in an astronaut, suit, you become the material that absorbs the solar radiation and you have no protection of any of the atmosphere. So you are, in, in a way, unshielded from all of that energy coming from the sun and it will take whatever material or matter is there and continue to warm it up until it gets, we're talking, boiling point. Okay, so that's why you tend to see astronaut suits, all rockets and satellites. They have highly reflective materials like we learned back in transfer of energy, and we need those in order to keep astronauts, equipment, ships cooler so they don't overheat. Okay. Let's move over to air pressure. As you can see, as we increase in altitude, the air pressure drops precipitously. So as we increase in elevation and we hit this data line, that value on the x-axis gets closer and closer to zero. Sea level is at one ATM, which is one atmosphere, meaning on average 14.7 pounds per square inch of your body, just like we learned in the beginning of meteorology. Water vapor works very similarly in that at sea level, it terminates at an average of about 40 grams per cubic meter. That's sort of our limit on the surface. And it decreases precipitously again down to almost no water vapor. Eventually, you get into the stratosphere just mildly or just the most minute amount of water vapor is present within this portion of the stratosphere. And beyond that, there is no water vapor. So that also means that in terms of weather, all the weather on this entire planet occurs in such a small, thin, five to seven mile altitude. So now what I'd like you to do is to go to page four in the meteorology packet where you have properties of the atmosphere. There are a, a good amount of practice that I'd like you to go through and then I will share with you the answers. So now is a good time for you to pause the video and go to page four of that binder and begin your practice utilizing the skill that you are now just introduced to for our selected properties or its atmosphere. If you need it, there is one section on page one that you may need in order to complete your questions. There is a troposphere column here on page one of your reference tables. So in case you need to figure out elements that are present in the atmosphere. Okay, so now's a good time to pause. I really hope you were able to pause and that you're not just gonna copy the answers because I'd really like you to practice this stuff because this is helping your deductive reasoning skills. This is helping your inductive reasoning skills and your ability to read through reference material and make sense of it. But here is properties of the atmosphere. If you want to pause the screen to check your answers, feel free to do so. I would like to scroll up and just rinse and repeat those instructions where you pause and check your answers.
All right, so our next topic that we're gonna start is station models, but for today, that's all I have. If you could, if you have questions, you have concerns, feel free to leave a comment below in the video so I can get back to you and hopefully I can help you understand this a little better, okay? And be sure to check Google Classroom and WebEx for any resources that you may need. Bye.